Um, the excellent number four came out that continues to be like a really good read. You know, Venus de Milo is finally coming back the next issue, and I've been like waiting for that. So I guess like kill Tootle Pip. You don't know who any of these characters are, I know because you don't read the book. First of all, but yes, I do. Um, Venus is the okay. one that's like kind of like a like ghosty kind of like glop thing, right? <laughs> yes, we'll say that. <laughs> glop. Yeah. She is like <laughs> she's like energy. And so when her power is manifested, she like turns into um, basically like this kind of matter energy. That don't make any sense. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of another relaunch. We're your host. I am Piotr Nikolaevich Rasputin, aka Colossus. Ooh, okay. And I will be. Ooh, I was gonna be his one of his girls, Domino. Like, that's just popped in my head, but I don't really like. I cannot that. stand. <laughs> I think like when I think about comic book characters, I do not like. She is at the top of the list every single time, and I really don't know what it is. I just anytime I, you know, I'm a big X Force girl, so I read all those books back mm-hmm. in the day. Anytime she was there, I'm irritated. But I also know it's her powers. I don't think I like left powers. Oh, that's fair. I don't like left powers either. But don't it's you like uh? Iska? No. Oh. I liked him when she was red. <laughs> and giving Rihanna. <laughs> exactly. You told fish and, and then she turned into that yellow mustard thing. I don't know what that was. And then, like, I will say I like bad luck powers. I think when the effect is, like, something bad happening, like roulette, when she does her little bad, bad luck diss, those things can be interesting. But, like, when it's good luck and everything just happens in your favor, it's too much of a MacGuffin sometimes. And then I don't like Domino's design. She looks like a Dalmatian. And it just doesn't move me. And, like, I always think about her being drawn by Rob Liefeld in the tub with Cable, and it was just, like, some of the nastiest panels I've ever seen in my entire life. She's not a good character. That whole X-Force team during that 90s era was... Pharaoh? Was favorite <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Pharaoh was Shadow Star, left. too. I like Shadow mm, I used to like Shadow Star. He is one of those characters that's become extra convoluted over time, and it's been for no reason whatsoever. And I, no, actually, that's a lie. It's because of Pad during that X-Factor run. They always hinted at Shadow Star being the son of Dazzler and Longshot. Like, it was something they tried to play with. They've done the thing of him being, like, from another dimension, then him being this guy named Benjamin Russell, da 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 But we always remember that when, like, Longshot found out Dazzler was pregnant, he was, she was like, Shatterstar, really? So, like, that whole thing's been there. Um, and then Peter David came back and said that he was the son of Dazzler and Longshot, but he was taken to the future, and then he was cloned and that's where Longshot was created from. And then that's how Longshot ended up meeting Dazzler and getting her prey. It was like this time loop thing that just resulted in him like being his own dad. And I was like, this is weird. And it's stupid. Don't ever talk about it again. We're wiping that from the sleep. That always is something that I think clicks Dazzler way down. Whenever yes! she gets involved with that Longshot mojo where all of that I was talking to some other Dazzler fans about this not too long ago, honestly, and somebody said they really do think that little story and, like, retcon of how he did it is, like, what has dragged the character down to the point where, like, nobody really wants to use her because it's always something that people are going to be talking about at the end of the day, like, oh, what's this weird thing with her son dad? Um, (laughs) Or her son husband, excuse me. Um, And it's just, like, it's weird. Keep Somebody it just say that was always a dream. Be like, that was just a dream. <laughs> and, <move> like, on. <laughs> and then it, it sucks because you know Shatterstar showed up in those X Factor issues that Leah Williams wrote towards the end of the run, and like Dazzler was a part of the team that went to Mojo World to go and save them, and like he saw her and he was like, oh Dazzler, and she was like, hey Shatterstar, and he like looked at like don't look at her, don't do it. <laughs> Let's just ignore it. Stay, Stay away. away. Forget it. That was that. Anyway, how are you? I'm doing great. You know, it's a beautiful sunny Saturday, and I'm feeling good. How are you? I am 
not too bad. It is not too bright out here. You've um, been saying that a lot. The weather. I know. I'm in California. Like, what's going on? Down. It's, not, <laughs> it's not working for you anymore. I, I actually was here for this. Possible. I see a lot of people actually say that. They're talking about it's just always raining. It's been cloudy. It's like, I mean, but on the other hand, I think that's better than everything catching on fire. That is fair. <laughs> good point. I haven't smelled any fires, so that's a good point. Because <laughs> I remember when that was going on for a time. And it, it was hell. Like, wow, you know? Um, we were so, going straight to hell. But I'm also a little biased. I like cloudy weather and gray skies. And I like a little rain every now and then. I like the sunshine. <laughs> the lights. <laughs> Shocking to nobody. I like light. <laughs> All right, y'all, well, let's go ahead and get into the updates of the week then. Um, okay, so there has been some stuff that I wanted to talk with y'all a little bit about first. Um, people seem to like scoops. And, you know, when people are finding out some tea or whatever, they want to know. So I don't know I'm going to go. You just said scoops. I thought you were talking about ice cream. <laughs> I was about to say. You do like that too. Uh, no, because I mean, clearly. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> no, go ahead. Continue. Yeah. Um, so people like scoops. And um, I've asked you guys, some of you guys have DM'd us saying, you know, that's fine if you want to, you'll spill something. So I'm going to go ahead and say, before I like scoop anything, I tell you my sources and all that stuff and let you know. You don't want to hear any rumors or whatever, just fast forward through this part. Okay, so there were some rumors about the Deadpool 3 plot. And <clears throat> the rumor currently is, and this is over on Reddit, that Deadpool, Deadpool 3 will be not necessarily like a pruning of timelines, that there will be a timeline where Magneto basically completely took over. And it'll basically be... Deadpool, as well as Wolverine's duty to go and stop this, you know, renegade Magneto within his timeline. And by the end of it, Deadpool will join the MCU timeline. Now, personally, I feel like that is along the lines of what everybody kind of assumed would happen within this Deadpool 3 movie. One of Deadpool's miniseries is Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe, where he literally just goes around and kills everybody. So... A lot of Deadpool fans like that storyline. A lot of uh, people kind of just really like that storyline. At least it's just known. So it makes sense to use that as a way to kind of get Deadpool over into this universe where you're literally killing off the the previous one. Now, filming for Deadpool 3 has recently started. However, y'all know that the uh, strike is happening right now. And I know that during filming for the first Deadpool, um during that whole time ryan reynolds likes to have writers on set with him so like in every anytime anything needs to rewrite like the writers are already on set and during the first writer strike that went on he paid for the writers out of his pocket to be on set um so he just like paid for them to be there because he really does prefer to have the writers on set That's really cool. kind of shows you like yeah he like ryan reynolds really wanted to like push dead well, i think it took I do remember that. I, I remember like how hard he was working to get the movie made and all the stuff and like when the trailer leaked and like those clips and all that. He was really, he loves it. It's his thing, I guess. He loves it. Yeah, Deadpool is really his character. And so he paid to have them then. Now, this time around, um, he can't do that because all of the writers are already on strike. They like aren't allowed to work. On top of that, he is not allowed to improv. So, because that will be considered a rewrite. So, I'm not sure how that will affect production. I'm not sure how much that will affect, like, the script. Because of a character like Deadpool, like, I guarantee a lot of those jokes that we've seen in the Deadpool movies were improvised and not a part of a script. So, wondering how that is going to really affect them. They didn't, they haven't halted production or paused or anything? Not on Deadpool 3, not yet. That hasn't been reported. I'm sorry. I just... You need your writers, baby. <laughs> like, what's going <laughs> on? <laughs> Why are we doing anything without the writers? It doesn't make any sense. Can someone pay the writers so they can come back on set? <laughs> yeah, and... Give the people they might need. I don't know. Okay. That's all I really got to say about that one. Um... All right, and also we find out that Marvel has had to actually pause 
some of their productions, both Thunderbolts and Wonder Man have been indefinitely paused because of the current writer strike going on. Now, again, like I was saying, get them people their money. Everybody knows that I am a huge Wonder Man fan, one of my favorite Marvel characters. Um, <laughs> I'm one of the few out there who is very vocal about being a, a Wonder Man fan. And while I am super excited for the show, obviously I was fan casting Yaya like <laughs> from the jump. You were, you were very ahead of the curve on that. I remember. <laughs> so to have this, I'm very, very excited for it. However, like if you gotta pause it so the people get their money, do go for it. However, I do wonder if this is going to affect the like MCU at large because i've been thinking that recently like the whole timeline and just when things are coming mm -hmm. out, all that stuff. oh absolutely it's going to be pushed back somewhat and we i'm t i told you what did i always tell you we weren't gonna get x-men movies till like 2050. <laughs> i don't know i don't know i think those might be i don't think that we're gonna get a lot of things pushed back i think the things that were in the pipeline are gonna be in the pipeline However, a lot of things that were planned are not going to come out anymore. So, like, if if it wasn't already in production, I don't think it's, I think it's fine. Wait, did I say that right? So, give me an example. <laughs> who, who's someone, so like, who was who something that you think might have had something that got cut? Um, I'm trying to think about anything that was announced in phase five. Like, hasn't you know how they were talking about, like, the Marvel horror stuff after they did Werewolf by Night. Do you think they had more things planned with that and the man thing? Oh, all that stuff is cut right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, they're not doing none of that. So I'm looking at the Phase 5 currently. All this stuff is for sure going to happen because I think the production timeline and everything is still there. Um, Ironheart, you know, Daredevil, Thunderbolts. All this stuff was still kind of Agatha, Covenant of Chaos. I think all that stuff was still kind of happening. Blade, um, the production, oh, I think. That was, was, no, that was already kind of iffy. <laughs> I don't Yes, yes. But I don't think they're going to let that one go. However, I think if they didn't start production on it, you might. No, they said. It might get cut. They, I mean, they had already stopped with like everything in the strike. I just, again, if for me, I think it's something that's always going to be able to come out. I just don't know how long Mahershala is going to be attached to the same project. Right. Or any of the people who were attached to these projects before, like, that they need to come out again. Whoever, like, whoever needs to do whatever needs to make sure she stays on. Mm -hmm. You don't want Mahershala to stay? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, he can stay. But I'm saying, like, if he can... He gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know what you mean. <laughs> I get the <it>, chill. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that for the most part, everything that's kind of been announced and at least the production and stuff has kind of already started. Um, it will keep going. I think whatever stories they may have had will definitely probably be tweaked because whatever they were planning for phase six. Wait, I think Phase Six is probably the one I should be looking at. Phase Six is the one with the big, the, the movies, the Avengers. Kang yes. Out. Yeah. Oh come on. <laughs> I don't like those things. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like Avengers and Dynasty and Secret Wars. They mm. supposed to have been coming out in 2025. So. Oh yeah, that's definitely gonna happen. Yeah. Who knows now? So. Or if they do still happen. Who's writing it? I don't know. Right. And are they <laughs> going to be putting it together that quickly? Because I've discussed this, at, you know, at work, and it seems like this strike is going to last at least three months. Hmm. Well. If they don't come to some kind of conclusion. But the DGA and, uh, like, the Directors Guild and the other guilds, if they also start striking, like, and it looked like it looked like um, SAG is about to start. Yeah, the it's Max like, thing really pissed everybody off. <laughs> yes. So, which I doubt was, the app it is not that great. It's the same. It's just it's ex it was just like, what's going on? No one's really thinking right now. Everybody's just trying to be greedy. <laughs> Nobody's Man. thinking. Well, I mean, I wish Marvel the best of luck. 
I don't really know. They got me for maybe like two more years. Yeah. That's the that's the end of the phase six. Yeah. Allegedly, it should have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I got me for two more years. If we get, wherever we're at, when we get to the end of those two years, is where we're at. Gotta be interesting. They should just start over, in my opinion. If this, honestly, if this were honestly, I don't want to give you the ammo, but I'm going to say it anyway. I would push back. The only thing that I would push back is Fantastic Four, and pretty much any other Phase Six movie. <laughs> I would like all of Phase Six that they announced, which was Fantastic Four. Avengers Kang Dynasty, Secret Wars. I would just cut all of that and just do Secret Wars and reboot it all. This is your time to really clean you house. You think it's time for a reboot? Just start it all over. Yes. You now have the rights to all of your properties except Spider-Man. You don't have to cobble together anything anymore. Start it over and just do a, do a whole new thing. You've also learned now that the general audience doesn't really care for pockets of the universes that they have to follow. You, they try to kind of mimic the comic book universe a little bit with the well, multiverse saga right now, with these phases four, five, and six, where it's, oh, you know, you like the magic stuff, you can go follow Wanda and them over there. You like the street corner stuff, Daredevil and Yelena are over here, and you got the cosmic stuff with the marbles up there. This is a lot for people. <laughs> I think I don't think too many people care to kind of bump, bounce back and forth in between this. With the MCU in the first, the three phases of the Infinity Saga, it was all just kind of one linear story following going up to them to go defeat Thanos. Sure, there were uh, uh, different properties, you know, spinoffs and all the other kind of stuff. But for the most part, it was leading up to that one thing. I think general audiences aren't that interested or care that much to kind of like, Go to Keep up and, and like their phase. So with the reboot, you would redo it and you do you'd keep it smaller. Yes, and just go with a linear thing. Sure, we got some spinoffs here and there. I'd have the Avengers, Fantastic Four, and the X Men all be their main like little corners or whatever, you know. And then you can build up to all of them cross over and whatever. Would you have the same Avengers? Like you'd have Iron Man, Black Widow back, or would you have like the newer versions of those characters back as those original teams? Um, we bring the old school people back, but still like incorporate the newer characters. You know, don't make it where they didn't exist. Yeah. Just they existed while they were around. Like we should be getting Yelena and Black Widow together. You know. Mm -hmm. or um, any of the or Iron Man or something like that so like mm -hmm. just bring them around closer mm -hmm. together okay that's what I, I would do um, they don't pay me to do that so I'm not walking with you yet but I'm, Damn. I gotta like I gotta like a brisk walk you put shoes on? okay I'm, I'm thinking about it I'm, I'm standing okay. at the door okay Walk me, through me. Walk with me. Please. <laughs> let me. Let me see. I don't know. I mean, I do kind of agree that I think that the general public has gotten a little bit over having to follow so many things. Again, I will always talk about my experience after seeing what was that Eternals and the post credit scene came up and the people who were next to me were so confused about what was going on. They were like, where is this going? Why are they introducing these characters? Da, 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 da. But I think for comic book fans, it's a little bit different like we're, we're looking more into that we're used to it we like the big expanding world we know that we can go to like certain places to get certain things um but again i also do feel like it's kind of gotten to the point where a lot of people where they just feel like they don't necessarily i think a lot of people always want to see the marvel thing like when it first came out and now that's not really so much the case i feel like people are either waiting for it a little bit more or they're just like i'll just wait mm -hmm. unless they it's something like it. that they like specifically like like a weird guardians fluke Right. Yeah. Right. And I think you could bring that spark back by kind of just scaling it back and building up towards something rather than just a whole bunch of properties out there and saying, hey, which follow whichever character you like. Okay. I'm putting my shoes on. Thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm putting my shoes on. 
All right, y'all. Well, y'all let me know what you think about what I just said. <laughs> and let's go ahead and take a break, and then we'll come right back. Cool. I did see somebody tweet about um, Avengers number one being on there. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. They got smart. I wonder if that's going to be the new thing. I mean, I think it will be. But again, I've always said that I felt like like Marvel Unlimited, Infinity, Comics, DC, Infinite, I think those are really good avenues of how to kind of progress comics and how people read them. They just have to really legitimize it. Yeah. I think that they just haven't care to i think they're too afraid to like lose the like i'm about to say i think it's i think a the print is going to piss off a lot of comic book stores and then b it's just like an old way of thinking so many people who were in the comics industry like were reading comics back in the 80s and the 70s and stuff like that well like this is how they read and this is how they do stuff that's how it should always be but who knows and with that welcome back to another week of another pool of comics. Now we had quite a few. The big books of the week are going to be your um, rereads, though. So I'm very excited. Ooh. For that. Um, but a couple of quick mentions. Justice Society number four came out, and you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I was thinking about dropping this, but when I went onto Comicsology, it says that it's only five issues, and this was issue four. So I was like, I might as well just stick around for the last one. But this, it was not what I wanted from the JSA. <laughs> you were so hyped for it when it came out. John's is being like John's is being like John's and like not in a good way and oh. the art is beautiful the p- characters look really nice um, but whatever that happened um, the excellent number four came out that continues to be like a really good read you know Venus de Milo is finally coming back the next issue and I've been like waiting for that so I guess like kill Tootle Pip you don't know who any of these characters are I know because you don't read the book first of all but, yes I do um, Venus is the okay. one that's like kind of like a like ghosty kind of like glop thing right <laughs> yes <we'll say> that. <laughs> glop. yeah she is like <laughs> she's like energy so when her powers manifested she like turned into um basically like this kind of matter energy and so she's able to shoot it and like turn blast but she doesn't have a physical form so they have this containment suit that they put her in that like does it and so throughout the entirety of this series and the last one Zygus has had her like in a tank they've been rebuilding her because apparently she, not apparently back in the day she exploded when she took out some villains but her whole thing is that she'll always kind of reform and so the reformation process was taking really long so they're just speeding it up and so the next issue she's coming back and so I'm like, excited to finally have her on the docket um Fury number one came out that was a one shot written by Al Ewing about Nick Fury he no longer going by Junior by the way so don't call him that um but it talks about him the group Scorpio and like this big machine um that this device that he's trying to get, he's feisty this girl. There's a few different artists who come in through the book, Tom Riley, Adam Kubert, so one of them. Um, it was good. There's like, okay. they do some really fun stuff with the flashbacks of him reading a dossier about the old Nick Fury's mission. And like when he pulls the dossier out, it's like a cover of a comic book. And like the art was oh, really cool, cool at that way. And then, like, <laughs> that and, cool. and then the art changes, and so he's going through that stuff. It says we'll continue his adventures in Fantastic Four. I don't know what's going on in Fantastic Four that all the like spies are going over there for some reason, but I need them I to pick a new place. Start restarting Shield because <laughs> Maria Hill's showing up in there. It's saying that his story is going to continue in Fantastic Four. I'm not reading Fantastic Four. I'm sorry. That's unfortunate for you. I don't think I'm missing too much. But Action Comics 1055 <laughs> also came out this week. That continues to be just a really great story. Philip Kennedy Johnson is fantastic. Superman family. And Hellcat number three came out. That continued her story. She's trying to figure out who killed her ex boy. Well, I guess he's ex boyfriend now because he's dead. But who killed her boyfriend? Um, And we see her just dealing more with her issues with the supernatural. She goes back to hell. She runs into Hellstrom. It's like a lot of fun. It's a lot of good stuff. I've actually talked to a few people who have picked this book up who didn't know oh, wow. about okay. Hellcat and they are loving it. So I just want to continue that trend. If you're not reading it, if you want like some supernatural horror, like yeah. investigative type stuff, this is the book for you. It's fun. It's cool. It's dope. And now uh, we'll get into our main books of the week. And number one on our list is The Authority number four from Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch. Tell us about it. 
All right. Um, so this is issue number four. Again, they have been going against this villain on uh, from Gamora Island. And in the last issue, the team kind of split off into different missions. Jenny was like, all right, we need um, Midnighter. You need to sneak into Gamora Island while the rest of us are going to try to um, protect L.A. from this attack that's going to be happening. Now, this issue opens up. Magne uh, Magneto. Uh, Midnighter is beating somebody's ass. Like, <laughs> like for two pages. Her usual. Two pages. <laughs> he, like, Her usual. Some, some dude's ass. And it looks really, really cool. Um, and then he, uh, of course, ends up breaking up into Gamora Island. And he sees this, like, main tower, which is obviously, like, where the villain is going to be. Then we get back to L.A. And it is being completely torn apart by these uh, superhumans who have these, uh, like, Kryptonian powers. And the team just gets off in try to attack. You know, Apollo leads the charge. He starts attacking some people. The magic guy is a shaman. He says that, like, he used to um, want to be the shaman, but to be honest, he was just a junkie. Like, he was just studying all this stuff, but really, he was just using a lot of drugs, and he's having this, like, magical, mystical contact thing with his, like, past selves. It's very, like, Avatar, how they can, like, speak with their past selves. Um, and he's, like, you know, reach inside, do magic, and he does this, like, crazy big magic spell where he turns all the people who are getting ready to attack into like chunks of metal and <laughs> Jenny is like that wasn't smart because now it's raining metal <laughs> down on us yeah. um, because it was really cool to see because like all of the characters like they start to crack and then they like are just these pieces over as they shatter um, and all this metal starts to shatter everywhere but then the metal turns into trees and um, Jenny is like, what did you do? He was like, I had to do something with this mask. Like, I couldn't just leave it. You can't destroy matter. So he just turned them into trees. So that was a cool little magic thing. Apollo was up in the air getting ransacked by like 20 different of these superhumans. And he's like trying to fight them all off. He doesn't want to really try to kill them. But then he says, fuck it. And lasers, sun lasers them and starts going after them. But then he gets ransacked by a bunch. He's like, I need some backup. The engineer comes in, and she's the one who's like this, like, kind of Iron Woman character. She's got this completely silver body. She uh, changed the her bloodstream for nanites, so all of her blood is just uh, like nanobots. And she does this like really cool science thing where she like uses the nanites to stop a bunch of the people around her. Really cool moment. Inside, we see that Midnighter has broken in to the complete main room where the villain is. He runs into the villain, and uh, Midnighter is like, what is all of this stuff? We find out that the villain had been using his two brothers that he killed and his mother. He's been using like their DNA to create these superhumans. And um, he tells the, he tells Midnighter like, oh, you know, well, I'm just gonna do this. Like everything that I'm doing right now is gonna, because this is gonna revolve around my world. Like I'm gonna be the ruler of all this. And Midnight's like, huh, where the world turns, she just gave me an idea. And he takes the door teleporter back into his ship. And for some reason, he thought it was a good idea to ram the ship <laughs> into Gamora Island and just like kill all them people. <laughs> you gotta get it done by any means necessary sometimes. Th just that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Those were literally his words. <laughs> I gotta get it done. <laughs> so he true. takes the ship and just like runs it into the island. Um, and the heroes end up saving the day and they end up going back to the ship. So I will have to say that like, this has been really fun and what I wish the X-Men were right now. <laughs> I miss when it was like a team of people going up against a villain while they are not only being cool, you know, that stuff is awesome. But they're also like giving out their personalities and we're seeing a lot of how they feel about each other. Um, you know, there's Swift in this. She's got these like wings and like claws and stuff. She comes in and helps as well as uh, Jack Hawksmore. He's that one that I said, he can like speak to cities. I think it's weird, but. It is weird, but you know, I don't know. It's something about like a historical aspect to the power that I really like. I think about the power man that Marvel has, the one that they uh, made for the champions. Like that was his ability. Like he he got his chi from like the history of the city. I think that's but cool. 
<laughs> like <laughs> and, okay. and just like you feel it and like you learn but i don't know i like a power that has something to do with like learning and adaptation and knowledge i think about that all the time you watched the show the magicians didn't you no i did not well you should it's an amazing show but like one of the like um houses that they divide their characters up into is like knowledge like those are the people who are just kind of like always learning spells and i think stuff like that is fantastic knowledge is power it is it truly is but communicating with the city and like his feet like turn into these claw things so he could like climb around but only work yes, in cities. like the city <laughs> i love it i mean i love living in a city but the power aspect of it is whatever it's cool it's different i guess it would um, be again, interesting if what they did in like certain cities, if the powers, you know, that actually would be racist. I'm not gonna say that. I was gonna say like if the abilities like were kind of like based off the demographic of the people who live there, but I was like that could oh, get no. some <laughs> 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 oh, no. That could that could be bad. <laughs> that could be really bad. So maybe don't actually. Do that. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> don't give anybody any ideas either. <laughs> um. But yeah, like we see a lot of the characters like interacting with each other and, and um, you know, while Apollo is up there screaming for, you know, backup, they are still having a conversation. We see like how they feel about each other and more about their personalities and stuff. So um, I, I love a team book like that. So this has been great to reread. Um, I hadn't read all of this. I think I've only read like a few issues of this previously. So some of the stuff is new to me. Um, been loving Apollo in this. Um, Hands down, that's, cemented as a top three DC character for me. Well, that's good. I'm glad that he's reached that milestone for you. I know he's kind of always like teetering because he don't really be. He, he used to obviously he used to do a lot more than what he does now. Although they've been building him back up to actually do other stuff. So yeah, he's coming back around. He's coming around. You know, it seems like um, we probably got to wait to the movie. You know how that works. Yeah, when the movie comes out, it's really going like boom, 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 boom. As a Midnight fan, I'm ready. Mm. Boom. Um, I would end up giving this issue um, a four out of five. Again, it's wild that, like, I'm normally not a Brian Hitch fan. But, like, I really like his art here. You know, I was just going back, and I saw some of his stuff from Hawkman, and I was just like, yeah. I don't get it. Right? Yeah. Not bad here, though. Maybe I'll have to, like, look over some of those 30 issues, but... Okay, next up in the final book on the list is Annihilation Nova number two. That's from Dan Abnett and Andy Laning, and with art from Kev Walker. And you are continuing the story of Dick Ryder. What's going on? Yeah, and I don't get it. Everybody is always talking about that Nova is this great character, and he is so fantastic. I don't. He is spotlighting in X Men Red right now, and I do not get it. He, he sucks. Is. <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> like, he, the only person that's worse in this is that girl, Cammy. Now, <laughs> this this oh, issue no, starts off. Like, <laughs> this issue opens up and it's Drax and Cammy talking to Nova, and they're on Xandar, like the Annihilation Wave had completely ran through it. Um, this is now day 11, right? And Cammy has like a smart ass comment to say every time she is around. Um, while Jax is like, I need to help get us off of this island, got to figure out how to get off there. And Nova is in his woe is me era. And oh my God, don't come around me. And, um, and you, I'm the worst thing in the world. And look, look what happens when you get next to me, worlds explode. And Jax is like, you got to focus. Like, we got to get well, off it there. It kind of sounds like John. Whoa. <laughs> John Stewart? Yeah, wasn't that like his whole no. thing? He was always like crying about the planet he blew up and like he no. he was. He didn't want to move on. <laughs> People okay. just keep bringing it up. The planet no. that got blown up. He he would take responsibility. And be like, yeah, I did it. Okay. He got more serious. That's what it was. He stopped like having fun, being like <laughs> having fun. He got a little bit more serious after that. Because okay. the reason the planet blew up was because he was kind of fun. Um, but anyway, uh, Nova starts having these like talks with the world mind because I guess like it's all all of the Nova Force is now within him. He's having these conversations with the world mind, but other people can't see the world mind, so it looks like he's talking to himself. Um, but again, he's just having all these self doubts, and I get it. Like the world just blew up, 
I guess I should not be too harsh on him. <laughs> like, <laughs> Can you imagine, like, somebody says, like, I get it, the world just blew up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, why but, you out here being sad? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, we got to move on. <laughs> but uh, they are trying to get off of this island. Drax is like, there's got to be some ships or something around here. They end up finding this, like, one, one ship. It's being eaten by Annihilation bugs. Again, the reader knows that they're the Annihilation wave, but the Drax and Nova are like, what even are these things? <laughs> and no one really knows what they are yet. Um, Drax is like, I will fight them. You guys just head towards the ship. They try to get on it, have this little fight with one of the um, Annihilation bugs. Again, Nova is like not using his powers. He doesn't want to use any of the Nova Force. That candy girl almost got ate. And she was like, are you going to help me, like, do something? And Nova just threw something at the bug instead of, like, blasting with his power. I was going to say, he still has access to his abilities, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. he takes his helmet off and is like, forget it. Like, I don't even want to do this anymore. It throws it to Drax. Drax is like, fine, <laughs> I'll do it. He puts it on. He starts talking to the world mind and is like, hi, this is Drax. The world mind is like, what? He's like, yeah, he gave me the helmet. Don't worry about it. Let's get this over with. They end up having a, by they, I mean, uh, Nova and Cammy have this, like, one-on-one where Cammy tries to, like, tell him, you know, understand everything that went down, but we gotta, like, be better, and you're, like, the hero now. You gotta be a hero. They get back together, get on the ship, try to get out, and again, in order for the ship to, like, go, they need some of his gravim- gravimetric energy from his Nova force and he's got to believe in himself and Drax is like you got to do it he finally like does it summons up enough power for them to get out and they go through this one hall I don't like that (laughs) Mm. I don't like that comparison we're not going to do that Um, Mm. because anyway the one who actually is closer to being like him ends up showing up because the ship that they go through goes to this wormhole, but they, and they go to this planet, but it's starting to, like, descend too fast, because, of course, the, uh, the ship was kind of wrecked before, so they come out of the wormhole, it starts crashing toward this planet, who catches them? Quasar. That is who you think is the Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. So, yes, Quasar will be joining the team next time, issue, Cammy has something shady to say, and because Nova was excited to see Quasar, and Cammy was like, Oh my gosh, he's dressed more corny than you. And then the uh, issue ends. I'm thinking about Quasar. I like that sounds costume. about right. Oh. I mean, Not too much. I know you like I Quasar. Like so I'm excited to see what happens. But it's, this sounds very Green Lantern ish. Well, I know what happens, so. <laughs> I'm already over that part. <laughs> This reread has been interesting to re- go back through this, especially with Nova, where he is now in X Men Red. He's still like a jerk. Now, I've not forgotten that he punched Magneto. Like I on site. <laughs> yeah, that was messy. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I guess, what, what do you like feel about the story outside of Nova? Are you liking it? Do you kind of are you enjoying this annihilation wave as a whole? I will say that it is it does feel epic. I remember for me reading this when it was coming out. Um and I didn't finish all of it then, but then later I ended up going back and reading more of it once I was on Marvel Unlimited. And um it feels very like a movie kind of feel with this event where like, you know, there's this big chaotic force that comes to cause all this destruction and we have the down and out hero who needs to kind of believe in himself and we're kind of going through them as they work their way back up to defeating the villain um so it feels very epic this is i've always wanted this to be a movie do you feel like you are enjoying not necessarily writer but like the novas as a whole and like what they do like the stuff that he talks about with the world mind and the abilities and how they use them not really no mm. I don't really like the Nova Corps per se. Um, I am enjoying that I'm getting more cosmic stuff because currently there aren't too many cosmic books out right now. Um, I'm excited to see Quasar. I know he does some cool stuff in this. Also know what happens to him in this. So I am uh, looking forward to more moments like that. 
and how I feel about them now. So yeah. Okay. Fun story. I just don't see if a Nova. He can go. Okay. Well, with that, <laughs> let's go ahead and take a break. And then we'll <laughs> All right, everybody, <laughs> welcome back to another watch. In this week, we watched episodes four and five of the Justice yes. League animated series. Classic, because this was the John Stewart Green Lantern focused episode. So, already, also a fantastic start. <laughs> Is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. That's what it was. Uh, these two episodes were directed by Butch Lukic and written by Stan Berkowitz. And uh, they came out in November of 2001. Uh, so, wow. That's 2020 crazy. <laughs> That's really crazy. Also, shout out to them because it still holds up. Yes, yes. The animations like still look really great. Um, and just like the, the voice work and all that stuff, it looks still pretty good. Um, so episode four opens up. You know, John back in the hood, <laughs> going to the barber shop, <laughs> chop, chopping it up with the people back in, back, uh, back, in, back in Detroit, you know, being cool with them. And then meanwhile, the Manhunters end up attacking. And these are these robots who, in my opinion, I would love for them to become like kind of John Stewart rogues. Like I would like for him to have them. However, they are kind of, Hal Jordan's rogues, because if anyone remembers when Hal Jordan, when he became um, Parallax, I think I think it was when they became Parallax at this time that the Mandroids got taken over by Cyborg Superman. He used them to like attack. Uh, I think he used them to attack the Gold Coast, and that's what caused Hal Jordan to go crazy. So they've oh, always been kind of around. Bringing up lanterns and Hal and all that, I check. I don't know. You lost me. <laughs> Well, stay with me, y'all. But um, the uh, Manhunters end up showing up. I do kind of wish that they would end up becoming some John Stewart villains. But they show up. They clear Hawk Girl, who I have to say, I don't think I like her. We know why you don't like her, but that's fine. Go ahead. No, I don't like her. Just <laughs> <laughs> I, not only do I not want her to be with John, I think she kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> she's getting tossed around. Big Blue comes in to come and help. He ends up getting tossed around a bit too. Um, and the Manhunters end up like taking Green Lantern away and he admits to, you know, the problems that he ended up causing. So they end up going to this other planet where he's ended up being put on trial for destroying a planet. Now this is supposed to be a call back to his Cosmic Odyssey storyline which uh, was where Batman, Starfire, Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, and I can't think of the other character who was in it, but they all went to go and stop these bombs that were placed on these different planets, and they were working with Darkseid, actually, <laughs> um, because, like, the heroes needed to work with him to do some stuff with the anti-life equation. And long story short, John's bomb went off because he was like showing off with what he could do with his ring and not paying attention. His bomb ended up going off and the whole planet ended up being destroyed. So this is kind of a callback to that where in this situation, uh, Green Lantern was going to go stop Ken Jaro, who was the, he kind of shifts around in this. They used him here as like a, like a sly tinkerer kind of person who was working with the Manhunters to kind of frame John Stewart. But in the, Comics, I believe they're the ones who created the Yellow Lantern uh, rings and stuff for mm, um, okay. for, Sinestro, for Sinestro. So they kind of have to, he, he has a bigger role than the kind of what we're seeing in this animated movie, but it's kind of cool they still use them anyway. Um, basically, over the course of these, of these two episodes, there are the Justice League who's going around trying to investigate, figure out what's really going on. Superman and um, Martian Manhunter go to the planet that was destroyed. They see it's still destroyed, but like the moon that was there is still there. And they're like, that doesn't make any sense because if the moon 
the planet was destroyed, the moon that orbits it um, would have just floated off into space because there's no gravity for it anymore for it to kind of go around. So that's when they started to realize something's not right. Uh, long story short, they find out that the Manhunters have put everything up to this and um, they end up attacking John. John does the cool moment where he absorbs all the green energy and gives you everybody the Green Lantern Oath before taking out all of the Martian, I mean, the uh, Manhunters. And I forever engraved in my head the entire speech that he gave before he absorbed all of the green energy. Um, the I remember being like, how old was I, 10 at this point? <laughs> and completely like uh, loving all of this because John at that point was already like my kind of my favorite characters. I hadn't really read too many DC comics I was strictly Marvel at that point, but John Stewart was already like one of my favorites. And to see the and the live action of this and seeing the and brightest day and blackest night, blackest night, or evil shows yeah. in my sight. That was high. Are high. Well, I thought they were <laughs> high back then. John was my favorite character. This was like one of my big first introductions to the league. I don't know. Hot girl was kind of given. The shape was shaping. Her mace is hot. The suit is hot. The wings are hot. The hair is hot. She's hot. I don't know what to tell you. She's getting flopped. I get it. I'm not saying that. I get that. it. We'll see. Well, I mean, actually, she does kind of get flopped later on, but that doesn't even <laughs> talk about right now. John, does it matter to you which one? Kendra or Shaira? Shaira. I prefer Shaira. No shade to Kendra. I mean, I like Kendra, too. I've said this before. I like them both. They're both really great for different reasons, though. Shaira is great because, like, that is... Um, Connor's, Carter's true love. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's who the girl the spell is with. Kendra was different, but, like, she was also very good. So, I know they're still trying to figure out, like, how they're doing her in terms of, like, who Kendra Saunders is, nationality, race, where she comes from. I know there's been a few different versions of her popping up in different stuff, but her miniseries is coming out, so I'm hoping we'll get some definite answers with that. It looks good. But definitely Shaira. I won't be tuning in. I don't like her. So uh, definitely let us know what's going on with that when it does come out uh, with the Hawk Girls. I um, also like the Flash in this episode. He was really fun. Um, being kind of the comedic relief, trying to uh, play attorney <laughs> for Green Lantern for him. I'll say, I feel like, even though I'm not a Flash fan at all, I feel like I always moderately enjoyed him in this cartoon. Yeah. Like, it was that never overdone. Fun. Even, and we'll get to it later on when he has, like, there's one specific episode that I always think about with him in, and I, like, to this day, think it's probably one of my favorite Justice League episodes. We'll see if I feel the same when we get to it, and I'll bring it back up then. Because, like, there's a specific scene in it that always sticks out in my mind, and it's, like, because of him. Mm. Mm. I'm interested to see what which that part is. But again, like, yeah. Wally in this is fun. I don't really know. I didn't like him when he was Kid Flash. He was, you know, the little Republican. But Kid uh, Flash was a blight against him. Kid Flash was only good when it was Bart. Agreed, yes. Or no, I like um I like Ace, the black Kid Flash they have right now. They his name is also Wally's Wally. Then they were trying to call him Wallace for oh, a while. Um, but now they actually call him Ace, which I think is a, a good way to get around that. Um but I, I think I think he fits in there. I don't know. He had he was kind of being fake with Jackson and that other issue, but what you guys are getting together. That's real friends. It's friendship. It was jealousy, spitefulness, hatred, not good energy. But who knows what the future is? <laughs> who don't know? Um, but yeah, I thought this episode was these episodes were both really fantastic. Um, you get more about the Green Lantern lore and the, and the, and you also get kind of a different take on the Cosmic Odyssey story. I personally. I know some people like to say that's a great great John Stewart story, but not really. He's <laughs> just like only slightly like, in it. Mm. It's also like I think people associate it so much with him because he it was a traumatic event for him because he did it was he he was the reason that planet ended up being destroyed. And yeah, after that, that everyone just kinda made him kinda sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really have a problem with planets blowing up and being like, move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. 
they should not be allowed to kind of be sad a little bit. But they had John being too sad for too long. For him, it's time to move on. That's like, fair. I will say, I guess the crux of it is that it became like his only story. Nobody could yeah. get over him. It was like, yes, we know he's sad about killing this planet. Now what? I think it's similar to like Jean and her Phoenix story, like with the Debari and always having to come back to that and to aspect and be like, okay, you did this planet, you were the Phoenix, this is you, how do you accept it? And then you finally get the character to a spot. It's like, okay, you move on from it for a little bit, but then somebody still comes back. You gotta bring it back up again. Oh, I remember I just reread this story, or like, I remember when I read this story and I didn't like how it was. It's like, you know what I'm saying? And you get it one more time. And I feel like John never got, I feel like he's gotten finally past it now with the writers who yes. I think that's where his character has moved to. Do you have a fear that it'll go back to that? I don't because, you know, it happened with the Cosmic Odyssey thing and then again it kept getting rehashed <laughs> during the John's era of Green Lantern, which was solid, but again, I think that time they did it again, but it was Oa or um, it was Mogo that John had to kill. Um, so he killed another planet, <laughs> so it's like, okay, we get it, oh, but uh, a, <laughs> a little bit of a trend I see. <laughs> he's not, he's okay with, this time they kind of changed the story with Mogo, where it was, Mogo got taken over by a Black Lantern, so it was like, did you have a planet-sized lantern, he had to be the one to make the tough calling and kill it. Um, so that I think is a little better than him just, you know, goofing off <laughs> and letting a planet explode. Um, but I hope at this point, though, there aren't any other angles to that story to tell. So I hope that we don't go back down that road. And I don't think that will happen with um, Green Lantern War Journal that comes out later this year or any of the backups that are happening in uh, Green Lantern right now that Philip Kenny Thompson is doing. I feel like it's more going to be just about him before we start worrying about him blowing up a planet. Okay, until he has to do it one more time. Sometimes people got to get put down, and he is okay with doing that. But when I, but when my faves say it, they're bad people. <laughs> well, yeah, because they bad people. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what? Maybe bad people. Okay, this episode was good. That's all it I got to say. It was great. Um, next week, though, we'll be doing episode six and seven, and that is the Aquaman. Uh, focused episode, so that'll be interesting yeah. to see what's going on with there. Mm. I remember him being kind of nasty. Yeah, but that tracks. <laughs> <laughs> see? <laughs> but, like, not to everybody. It's different, though. It's different. We'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like Aquaman, he's... We'll talk about it next week. All right, y'all. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. Please make sure you guys rate and subscribe us wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Another Relaunch. You can watch us on YouTube at Another Relaunch TV. You can email us at Another Relaunch at gmail.com. You can find me on most social media platforms at Uncanny LZ. Keenan, where can they find you? As always, you guys know you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Keenan Lights. There's an underscore at the end. All right, y'all. Let's get up out of here and we'll catch y'all next week. Peace.